Hi, my name is Larry Jordan, and thanks for joining us today for this Power Up webinar on automating your video compression for the web. There is a lot of material that we have to cover in a very short period of time for us to work with, so let's get ourselves started. The first issue that we have to talk about is what does the word faster actually mean? Compression speed is mostly determined by the codec that you choose to compress into, the speed of your processor, the final compressed image size, and the filters that you apply to the clip. Now where you control the process is in preparing a file for compression. By speeding up file preparation, you can get other work done while your computer is compressing in the background. So faster just doesn't simply mean moving the bits from point A to point B quicker. Faster means how do we organize our files so we can get stuff into the process queue quicker. This session doesn't discuss the compressor interface or data rates or geometry settings or creating test clips or basic compression workflow. If this is what you need to learn, then you need to download an earlier webinar that we did, session 5, called Video Compression for the Web and DVD. What this session does is it builds on that foundation and presents advanced features in compressor that you can use to speed the entire process of compression. Here's what we're going to cover over the next hour. I want to define key compressor terms so that we're all on the same page as I start to use the terminology. I'll discuss export options from Final Cut Pro. I'll show you how to optimize compressor preferences and illustrate job templates and job actions. I'll show you how to create settings actions, use compressor filters to avoid rendering inside Final Cut Pro, create batches and batch templates, pre-process faster using job chaining, examine processor clusters, and show you how you can get faster speed if you consider using a different codec. Before we jump into the actual operation of the software itself, which is where we're going to spend the bulk of our day, I want to define a few key terms that Compressor uses. The first is background, job, batch, target, job action, setting action, and droplet. A background task processes without forcing us to wait until it completes. The easiest way to understand what a background task is to understand its opposite, which is a foreground task. For instance, Final Cut Pro rendering is a foreground task. We can't do anything inside Final Cut while rendering is going on. Compression, on the other hand, is a background task. We can work in any application, including compressor, while files are being compressed. Generally, a background task takes longer than the same task when the same task is run in the foreground. But most of the time, we don't care about how long a task takes since we're not prevented from working during the background task. A job is a source media file that you import into Compressor to compress. One file equals one job. A batch contains at least one job file with compression settings applied to each job. Now remember, a job is a source media file. A batch is that source media file to which settings have been applied. A batch can contain one or more job files, and batches can apply multiple settings to a single job. Therefore, a batch that's ready for compression contains both the source media file or files and targets. A target is the combination of compression settings for the job, that is to say, the source file, the destinations for that compressed file, and the file names of that compressed file. Targets are always applied to jobs in a batch. And before you can compress it, every job must have a target. Compressor needs to know how you want it compressed, where you want it stored, and what you want it called. If any of those is empty, it won't allow you to submit the batch for compression. Now, I've tried to write this next one in English, but I'm going to say it, and I'm going to translate it. You can apply multiple targets to a single job in the batch to create multiple versions of the source media file. <laughs> so let me translate. You can apply multiple compression settings, which go to multiple destinations, to a single source media file. And you store that source media file and all those settings in the batch. So batches contain jobs, and jobs contain targets. A job action 
is an automated procedure that is applied to a job, remember that's the source file, once the job is compressed. Job actions that are supplied with Compressor include transferring a compressed file to YouTube or transferring a compressed file to MobileMe or burning a compressed file to DVD or burning a compressed file to Blu-ray disc. A setting action is an automated procedure that is applied to a single compression setting once it is complete. And droplets, which is the last term I want to define, Droplets are standalone applications that allow you to apply the same target to a file or a group of files without first starting compressor. The difference between a droplet and a batch is that a droplet only allows one compression setting and one destination per droplet, whereas a batch allows multiple compression settings and multiple destinations per batch. Droplets are focused on achieving a single task batches can achieve multiple tasks at the same time. Now the cool thing about droplets is they work because compressor doesn't actually compress files. A background application with no user interface actually does the work. Both compressor and droplets are considered front ends. They set up a file for compression, but they don't actually compress the file. That's done by a background process. So as soon as you submit a file for compression using compressor, you can quit compressor. As soon as you submit a file using a droplet, you can quit the droplet. Neither the droplet nor compressor are necessary to compress a file. That is done in the background.